Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hijas de la Chicanex, Taki y de ya. Today is our third episode and we're so excited to talk to you guys about we're what we're so talking about. We're so excited to be back today. in the studio. Yes, a we're back in the A third episode, Christy, can you believe a it? A third, a third episode. It's so exciting to know that we have continued this and we've just been adding on to our roster of episodes yeah. and that a lot of the little things that we've been wanting to do have been coming together so beautifully and it's been complicated it's been a little bit complicated but it but but you're you're right it's been a beautiful journey of trying to put everything together I often think of it as like you know weaving this big tapestry right and I think that that's what our podcast is but today is our third one yeah I mean we we talked about this in the pilot we talked about this in the first episode but it was just an idea that came to be between two friends like a long time ago yeah and I know that we had this idea and we ran with it but you're right like it has been yeah it's like, little by little coming to be to materialize yeah but I think Ritzy and I both can agree that we are learning so much not only from ourselves but from each other yeah. about podcasting if you have a podcast yourself or if you listen to podcasts you could relate like there's a lot that goes into it and I think that's the beauty of podcasts in themselves is that it's a person's own story so you absolutely have to put it and I think that during the pandemic you know listening to podcast I don't know about you but during the pandemic I've been listening to podcasts more than ever it allows me to kind of feel human connection mm-hmm. in a time where you know we're not feeling it as often as we usually would and so for me it's an ability to connect and relate yeah. with someone even if I'm not physically seeing the person I, yeah I, and for me it's like a sense of tranquility to be yes, honest with you I agree. coming from someone like me who loves to listen to music all the time yeah I have found myself listening to podcasts more throughout the pandemic Mm. because I feel connected to somebody yeah um in you know an intellectual and it like stimulates way. your brain yeah. because yeah. i feel like during the pandemic there's been a lot of even articles on on the new york times and the yeah. and whatever uh, about people feeling like their brains have gone to sleep and yeah. and they're worried oh my god is my brain gonna it's a it's, great it's way a to dormant. stimulate your brain yes yeah, and absolutely. just kind of get you thinking also allowing other people to give you a sense of what their Mm. mentality is a new perspective a new perspective and i think that with our podcast so far uh, a lot of people have given us some feedback that and it's been so wonderful yeah, like to they, read they it. have like a different perspective mm-hmm. on certain topics that they never yeah. realized before we've gotten some great messages on our social media yeah. platforms of questions you guys also have when you listen to our podcast and it's been so wonderful to see how some of these emails are, are people kind of realizing hey now that you've begun to unpack it i also noticed this mm-hmm. yeah and because i think you live in this world we live in we obviously live in a very fast pacing, mm-hmm. hustling environment. And sometimes it's your bubble too. You're so caught up in your own yeah. world that you don't realize that there's yeah, other yeah, things yeah. going Absolutely. on. And not only our podcast, but many other podcasts, they open up your mind to see how other people think, to see what is going on in the world that is out of, outside of your bubble. And Something I, that you're used to. I think it's so needed. It's always been. But I think that right now with everything that's happening right Mm -hmm. um, around us socially and, and politically, I mean, it's about time that we become alert to all of these mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. and and that you step out of your bubble and that you don't have the mentality of you. You talked about it last episode of it doesn't affect me, so I'm not going to consider it. No, it does affect you in some shape or form because it affects mm-hmm. your friend. And if it affects your friend, it affects you and yeah, and whatever it is. Right. It's a trickle down effect. It's it's an, an effect that uh, just because you're not feeling it. And sometimes that comes out of a, pre- a place of privilege, right? Saying yeah. that that doesn't affect you and recognizing yes. your privilege too is a step towards um, bettering. Woke. That's the word. I mean, honestly, I was going to go there. <laughs> how do I, I, I remember some of my friends checking in on me during the pandemic were mm-hmm. like, hey, how are you doing? You know, everything that's happening around us, what are you doing? I'm trying to stay woke and I'm trying to mm-hmm. continue to stay woke I, I I always have right um I've always appreciated that by you by the way thank you I, thank I you. feel like I have a selected few people in my life who are like that yeah um I will admit that I 
I for a while was that person that it kind of stood in my bubble mm. because it was a safe place for me. It is safe, and yeah. I remember the reason I bring this up is because, you know, I used to work in the radio world. So where you had to be, you know, aware of things going right. on in the world because right. you're a radio broadcaster. Right. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine there and he told me, he's like, I don't mean to tell you in a mean way. Mm-hmm. he's like but i think that you are in your bubble so much yeah. that you don't realize what is going on in the outside world yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. and i told him i was like it's not that i try to keep myself away from being like the word is woke mm-hmm. um it's more so because it's my safe place you know what though yeah I- I agree with you. It is a safe domain, but it's also illusory. It's yeah. illusion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because there's so much going around you. So even though you feel safe in this bubble, this bubble is also an illusion. Yes. And I think that when you get woke, if we want to use that word, mm-hmm. it's you taking down that illusion and saying reality as is and and maybe perhaps you involving yourself in ways where you're complicit in other people's oppression and you don't even realize that because and it's so, privilege like you mentioned yeah, earlier yeah. and uh, exactly i i um i have been that person and i'm trying to change my ways with that they also say that you are a product of the people you hang around with oh absolutely and you're a product of we're we're affected by our environment for sure definitely that sometimes we can be a and product of why, our environment yeah and that's exactly why i appreciate friendships like yours and um, i appreciate and you know what though yeah. i will say christy and people are like y'all are really going deep into your friendship <laughs> but i will say that <laughs> I mean, it's the root of this podcast. It's the root. Who cares? Of it. I mean, it started out through friendship, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and collaboration. But seeing your growth to me has been wonderful. I mean, it's been so beautiful to be a part of that journey and to witness that journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so glad and proud to be your friend, right? Um, Same. <laughs> it's turning like a little sappy thing. <laughs> no, but honestly, yeah. Uh, so kind of tying back into everything. That's why we are so happy to see that many people are really opening up their minds Mm. to letting us speak on topics that are important to us. And know that if you're listening to this and you feel sometimes like, wow, I I didn't realize that myself. Yeah, and that's good. That's growth, right? That's growth. But guess what? I'm learning as well as you are. All the time. We are all learning together. I think that's the beautiful thing about podcasts. Um, You listen to something and it makes your mind Mm -hmm. wonder, Mm -hmm. wonder, wonder. And you really start analyzing your life, analyzing your environment. And it's all uphill from here. Yeah. So that's what we have this podcast for. (laughs) And we're so thankful for everybody reaching out, for sending emails, also for reaching out about the segment that we're speaking about next month. So that's happening. Yes. As well. Thank you so much to the artists who have been emailing us. Mm-hmm. It's been so wonderful uh, to hear from all of you and to know that a lot of you, you know, want to utilize this as a platform to expose your artwork or to talk about the creative medium that you perform or that you do, right? Mm-hmm. That has been really, really nice to, to those emails to read. Speaking about growth, Christy, I definitely know that you know where would I be if my mentality was still in the same situation or location or place Mm -hmm. or setting that it was 10 Mm -hmm. years ago I think that's why when someone tells you you've changed like thank god for it yeah imagine if I hadn't changed like yeah I'm not the same person you absolutely a year ago uh 10 years ago I'm thankful for my growth just like you I'm are thankful as well. I'm thankful for my growth and I definitely am a firm believer that learning is a lifelong journey mm-hmm. so obviously your thoughts and, and your thinking and your rationale your mentality your logics are going to be evolving with you as well yeah. so anyhow with that let's go into our topic for today yeah popular culture popular culture last week was a really hefty topic so we thought that we, <laughs> we would thought we should fluctuate. lighten up the mood yeah and, and that's good, right? We'll fluctuate from hefty topic to to maybe a lighter topic. Mm-hmm. Of course, Today yeah. we're talking about popular culture, the popular culture that our grandparents were influenced by, that, that then trickled down to our parents. Mm-hmm. And then that then, right, as daughters, you and I, of, of parents who were immigrants, you know, that culture that then kind Molded of comes our lives. along with, with them and and molds us and shapes us in yeah. some ways in some shape or form correct uh there before we even start the topic i just want to start off by saying that there are so many things we can talk about 
mm-hmm. when it comes to popular culture that Absolutely. molded us and in the, the list of people that we will be speaking about i'm sure if you're listening to this and you as well have immig- immigrant parents that molded your life or their way their culture yeah yeah their culture molded you uh you're probably like wait why didn't she say this person well <laughs> i wish there was enough time to speak about every influence that we've had in our lifetime yeah, but like the telenovela segment, these are Correcto. the popular culture icons, iconoclasts that we can speak yes, from about. Yes, personal experience. Popular culture is really a, the cultural production. For example, what we're talking about is a cultural production in Mexico, right? But it, it allows, popular culture allows for multifarious forms of cultural production. And the popular culture icons that we're talking about today, some of them are singers, some of them are actors. Some mm-hmm. of them are, are actresses. Um, we'll obviously mention Prida, right? Prida was an artist as well. But they were they were really big during 20th century Mexico. Mm-hmm. And most of our grandparents lived throughout 20th century oh, Mexico. Yes. You say grandparents in my heart. Shines. I know, I know. My, <laughs> my I get really shines. nostalgic when I talk Same. about my grandparents. Same here. But um, I think it's beautiful it's to beautiful. know that there's yeah. people that have passed down their roots to us. Yeah. I think it's such a beautiful thing. Um, I'm the inheritor, I think, all, all the time. of. Mm-hmm. I'm an inheritor of a painful history, but I'm also an inheritor right. of a lot of beauty. Correct, um, yeah. And, I mean, if you're listening to this and we say grandparents, and unfortunately your grandparents are not yeah. around, our hearts you are might obviously get a little with nostalgic us. Too. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I think that's the beauty of the circle of life is knowing that, claro. you know, maybe they're not here with us, but their presence is in popular culture like this yes. that has been passed down to us and you know what christy i mm-hmm. love that you mentioned that because i think that when we have these conversations we rekindle our mm-hmm. par- our grandparents past yeah and in a way you know we we rekindle their lives right mm-hmm. um and so that to me is really beautiful but so we're talking about the popular culture of the 20th century that that influenced our grandparents and then that influenced our parents right and then when our parents immigrate to the u.s that they become a vehicle for that popular culture, right? I always think of, of, of for example, like Maria Felix was huge, and we're going to talk about her later. So they, they're they in Mexico, and they're popular in Mexico, but it's kind of like the stream, right? So when our parents immigrate, I think of it as the stream mm-hmm. that then bifurcates and moves over to the U.S., right? Uh-huh. And that's how I think of it. Uh, when I think of Maria Felix and, and what she meant in Mexico, mm-hmm. And then what the meaning that she takes, for example, in the U.S. In the U.S., yes. Both both of us were raised in Chicago, so the meaning that she takes in Chicago. Uh-huh. Sometimes you'll be driving around the city, and you see and her. You see her. Mm-hmm. you see her at a restaurant. They have an image of her in black and white. You're getting tacos. You see an image of Maria Felix in, ba- in sí, black and white. Sí. Or you're driving, and you see a mural mm-hmm. of Jorge Negrete. Or Women's Negrete. Day comes, and you quote her because sí, she has claro. some empowering quotes. Muchos, <laughs> muchos, sí. sí. She she is an image for female empowerment. I think Chicanas utilize her as an image mm-hmm. of female empowerment. Latinas sí. as well, right? Um, so to me, that's beautiful. But again, it's a stream of popular culture that then bifurcates as soon as our parents immigrate to this uh, to the to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's just a way for for things to translate through music, art so many ways you know Mm -hmm. so like uh, ritzy mentioned it's a vehicle that just kind of is timeless in a way even though it was maybe 20th century based uh it's timeless in the fact that i can listen to pedro infante or watch a movie with him and Right now, we said it earlier, we get nostalgic thinking about yeah. what it would be like. You That's know, the if- immediate feeling or reaction, right? Yeah. I told you, we were listening before recording recording the podcast. I, I told you, oh, I, I had a conversation with my dad and he said, oh, your grandfather really liked Cuco Sanchez. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, when I was younger, I'm sure he played uh, in the house, maybe, you know, in the patio or something. But I went back and obviously now we have things like Spotify and you can immediately search it or YouTube or whatever. Of course. And so I looked up Cuco Sanchez and I told you I'm listening to this song as I was listening to it with you. Mm -hmm. And I said to you that I wanted to cry. And don't get me wrong. I don't cry all the time. I'm not like walking and (laughs) weeping all of the time. But there's something about 
the voice, the mm-hmm. quality of the voice, the lyrics, the instruments, the sound. That's yeah. what makes me, I mean, as a music junkie, I love the sound. You get the goosebumps, yeah, right? Yeah, you get the goosebumps because it's not as, uh, the word is not filtered. I mean, I'll get more into that later, but it's just like, there's a static, beautiful sound mm. to it that I really appreciate. And it just makes you realize, wow, where it came from. Yeah. This is how far it has been passed down on, um, like you said, Spotify. We can look it up on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. But it wasn't that easy back then. Yeah. So the fact that I've, it has passed through all time. I mean, my time. grandparents, from the stories that I hear, right? That's how, this is how, it's so crazy. Through these stories, we rekindle our grandparents' past. Of we, course. In some ways, you're not only, through popular culture, we're not only resuscitating the actors or the actresses by watching them on tv we are, we're also resuscitating our ancestors mm-hmm. because they were a part of it and you hear these stories and so anyhow i was told that my grandparents would listen to all of these artists on their consola which is a, like a record player yeah, right like a record player yes. and that to me is so beautiful so i hear this music and i and i hear the quality of it the recording quality which mm-hmm. is so different mm-hmm. um and i get really nostalgic mm-hmm. i get nostalgic because and I often tell you, I feel like I'm missing part of myself sometimes when I'm in the U.S. Don't get me wrong, not all of the time. I, como hemos dicho, no, somos de aquí, somos de allá. But you start to miss the land. Mm-hmm. You start to miss the soundscapes of the land. Think and of it as like a, a, what is it called? Like a teleporting to a different yeah, time, a different absolutely. era. Absolutely. That's what this through, f- popular through culture paintings. does to yes, us. Yes, through yeah. paintings, for example, from Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, like all these different mm-hmm. things that just take you to a time of wow. Yeah. If only to live in that yeah. time. It's and an imagined past. It's an imagined past. And I I love to hear the stories from my parents. I love to hear stories from my grandparents. If you're lucky enough, your great grandparents. Mm-hmm. And, por ejemplo, mi abuelita Lupe, she, her, her, Pedro Infante, he used to sing the song Mia. Y ella estaba enamorada de él. Sí, mi abuelito le, le dedicaba esta canción mm. siempre a mi abuelita. So I listen to, I have it in my playlist. And I think of that, the fact that this was a song that probably conquistó a mi abuelita. And that pues was probablemente like, you know, no, and yeah. it makes you feel like, wow, like I can't believe that all of that is is in a form of yeah. a song those stories they're so beautiful and like you mentioned earlier you go to restaurants you mm-hmm. go to you know anywhere you can go and you see black and white pictures y te da ese como orgullo mexicano sí, totalmente. sabiendo que tu cultura viene de allí y por eso la gente ha sobrevivido también mucho tiempo oh sí totalmente um, as I'm listening to you and as I think about the popular culture icons that molded me Mm -hmm. um that were mexican and that that shaped me in the u.s i think of when i would see a film with like dolores del rio here in the u.s or Mm -hmm. or jorge negrete in a film that he was maybe in pedro infante Mm -hmm. um i think of that moment when i'm engaging with these icons with these actors actresses or singers uh i i think of it as a moment of engagement with or even as a meeting place right with my parents infancy Mm -hmm. i wasn't part of your infancy it's so hard to see our parents as children but i wasn't part of your infancy but at that moment as i am engaging with that Mm -hmm. suddenly i'm also engaging i'm creating this meeting place with your infancy yeah and to me that's beautiful right my my dad i remember said that he grew up uh watching obviously movies in black and white and now and now i love them and now as as a researcher i i i watch them for entertainment but i also analyze them right um but i think that when i'm engaging with them i also begin to understand my dad's infancy and that to me is beautiful right um Mm -hmm. and because they lived they lived your infancy with you yeah but then at the same time it's like okay well where, where did i come from absolutely Tra- and as tracing back yeah yes as immigrant parents it's like where did i come from que, que es lo que tú hacías, por mm-hmm. ejemplo, en México, and you que want to know hizo. sometimes you get in yeah. you want to know. you know how in the shows they always show you like your parents as kids and you're mm-hmm. like that fly on the wall mm-hmm. i feel like that's what these kind of things make me 
feel like the fly on the wall watching my parent be like a kid yeah you know no vias goes and you know joking around and playing around with like the kids from the neighborhood things mm-hmm. like that um because you imagine how their life may have been absolutely and then the beautiful thing is that you can always go further with that and your grandparents mm-hmm. you imagine what their life could have been and you see the black and white movies um and you just think like wow there was a time where technology wasn't even around and these people like this popular culture ended up becoming so big that it translated through so many yes and now they are what they are and they have influenced us yes they've influenced us and i think that it also generates an experience of having the past in the present Mm -hmm. right because i still engage with maria felix i still engaged with dolores del rio chavela vargas we're we're going to talk about it later but chavela vargas obviously uh was from costa rica but she was so influential in mexico and she considered herself mexican as well Mm -hmm. it's a way for me to experience the past in the 21st century uh as well and so you know looking back at Watching Cantimplas was so big for me because of, I could also allow me to remember my dad's childhood as he watched perhaps Cantimplas Mm -hmm. movies, right? Yeah. Yeah. What if somebody's listening to this and they're confused as to who are we talking about? (laughs) Because, I mean, not everyone is so connected to their culture. I will say that I always wanted to be more connected to my culture because of my immigrant dad right um but what if somebody who's listening to us is into the conversation but they don't even know i think and like i said sometimes it's things that you cannot control um you have to do your own research you have to take that extra step and you also have to remember that you try to try to maybe question yourself why you don't maybe maybe for different reasons right but i do think that sometimes assimilation models in the u.s as a consequence a consequence of that is sometimes forgetting you know this cultural production or or forgetting some of of what we call roots as well right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe this is an episode that you listen to and you think to yourself i'm gonna do i'm gonna search something on youtube i'm gonna i'm gonna give a phone call to like my grandfather my grandmother if they're Mm -hmm. still you know with us today and ask them a few questions i want to trace back my roots i want to go back to it yeah um Agree, because think about it. Ancestry.com has become such a big buzz. Yeah. Because a lot of people never cared to right. know their yeah, ancestors. Yeah. And they're but you like, know, wow, I went absolutely back, back. So imagine imagine having the beauty of knowing your own cult your own culture. Understanding your own it as family. well. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine like getting to discover a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Latin over here, but like a whole new world of, you know, infinite you know stories Mm -hmm. and that molded us to be who we are today Mm -hmm. and you're Mm -hmm. and it all all of a sudden clicks it's going to click and when you when you're driving down the street and when you're at a restaurant Mm -hmm. or when you travel to mexico these things will turn a light bulb on Mm -hmm. right you'll you'll begin to see you'll begin to realize your surroundings right because a lot of this cultural production is all around us, right? Where we are one of the largest minorities in the U.S. So obviously it's around you. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at it? Are you engaging with it is a are completely different question. It, yes. And so maybe you listen to this episode and you might not know, like, who is Cantimplas? Who's Tintan? Pedro Infante. Who's Pedro Infante? Sí. Pues ya tenemos YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in a way, it maybe it might motivate you to look into it a little bit more and to begin to maybe probe into the way that assimilation models in the u.s also work and how it 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 leads to erasure right it Mm -hmm. does lead to erasure Mm -hmm. um and it's also like a great way to not let our culture die i know mm -hmm. that um as chicanx chicanas chicanos everyone really tries to keep their culture alive but also we fight with that statement that Edward James Olmos made in Selena. Yeah. You try to keep up with like Oprah and the Cristina. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Pedro Infante and like things like that where it's up to you to keep that culture alive. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to try to understand your culture, where you're coming from. And one day, if you do have a family, pass it down to them. 
and that's how our yeah. culture stays alive yeah. it's up to us to keep that culture alive and i think that's how i take it i know that i don't need to know about pedro infante cantiflas you know maria felix mm -hmm. vida calo all these names that we're talking about but i also take it as a responsibility to pass my culture down yeah. to the future generations yeah. and the way that i remember these people because of my family i want one day my oh my god this is like putting this on the universe like a long time from now but yeah. if one day my great grandkids think of me as listening to this imagine that that's when i come back to saying it's timeless it is so timeless mm -hmm. and it just goes from then till now and it's just always going to be around I do think, you know, Christy, talking about that timelessness, that it's so interesting to me, but cultural representation in a land with a dominant culture that often has a plethora of um, representations that are often of white folks, right? Mm -hmm. You saying Maria Felix, um, or you engaging with like Jorge Negrete or Pedro Infante, it's a representation you you feel like you're reflected also as well right of course and um i think in a way that's also beautiful because it creates this kind of creative insurgency right in a media that's often saturated with folks who don't always look like us and the folks who do look like us are oftentimes stereotyped caricature versions of us right mm -hmm. which then yeah. goes back to our first episode about the racial shaming and whatnot mm -hmm. and so i think that it, it that's why maybe sometimes it is important to to be introspective about these popular culture icons um i will i will say that for me personally, I always felt it as a big responsibility to carry on the popular culture mm -hmm. in my life for the yeah. sake of being an immigrant daughter. Si, si. But we go back to the same topic of having that dual side. The dual and, identity? Yeah, mm -hmm. dual identity. And I, I, I would find myself being in conversations with classmates, colleagues sometimes, and where they would be like, oh, yeah, this popular song. And I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. I yeah. was so confused. And I was like, talk to me about Cristina. <laughs> talk to me about <laughs> Frida Kahlo. Like, yeah. things like that. Because yeah. I felt like as a young kid and growing up, I went to a lot of private schools growing up and where majority yeah. were white. I went to private yeah. schools as well. Yeah. yeah. And these conversations, I felt like I couldn't relate. And you know what? I, I kept... Com go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I completely resonate with that. I think after... With the career... The, the, my scholarship now and, and the career that I'm, I've engaged with and, and devoted my lifelong journey to now, you begin to realize that, that it's because a lot of those curriculums are oftentimes Eurocentric. Mm -hmm. So your parents don't resonate yeah, with a course. lot of that. And then you don't too, right? Because you're, you're the product of your parents. And, of course. And so, um, or the daughter of your parents. Uh, so it's like it the does, dual identity. Yeah. You're like, okay, I have to know as much as I know about my Mexican you go popular back to culture. The I need clip to from know Selena. about. Yeah, you need to know as much about this, and you have to be kind of like fifty fifty, so that if that conversation comes mm. up, you're always mm -hmm. on your A one game. <laughs> but it, it <laughs> to put it in like in you know lamest terms, I guess you could I, say. I, I often think we had a conversation last night. I always tell you, my brain is like cluttered with information. And it oftentimes, all of that cultural production and knowing all of it and under engaging with popular culture can often feel cluttering, right? Yeah. Um, and I go back to that word that that in the Selena clip, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. And you've mm -hmm. said it. It is beautiful work. It is beautiful work, too, because like you don't want to it. erase part of I'm yourself. I'm better because right. of it. But and, at the same time, mm -hmm, like you were saying. It's complicated. It's so and complicated. It, it can be it can be exhausting. Um we have to acknowledge and make space for those feelings but anyhow you know i to this day and this might be me going on a tangent i have graphic tees with maria felix on uh stamped on them mm -hmm. and um for example like david bowie that mm -hmm. that you begin to see right <laughs> yeah, yeah. the dual identity <laughs> yeah. coming into into play right oh okay so then then you know wow my parents transnational identity even influences some of the fashion that i own some yeah. of the clothing that i own mm -hmm. some of the some of the maybe even like maybe you have like mugs that have 
Frida Kahlo on them or and maybe have a mug with like I don't know like Beyonce on there too because yeah. I love Beyonce but right of course and yeah. you begin to see your dual identity and it's beautiful but it is a lot it um, is a lot but thank God we have Chente Vicente Fernandez <laughs> to jam out to to bring oh, yeah, us yeah. back. <laughs> no, pues, sí, sí, claro. But um, I mean, like I said, there there's so many things that we can talk about with this. Um, the popular culture is definitely something yeah. big in uh, Chicanx world. Right. Um, we have so many people that we could name off the top of our heads that have influenced us in some ways. Mm-hmm. And I mean a bit of them just to say or like another person like Juan Gabriel Javier Solís no was also big yeah I mean even if you want to go into like La Sonora Santanera which yeah. was active around 19 maybe 1955 1950s mm-hmm. Sonora Silvia Santanera Pinal. Silvia Pinal do you want to quote her because I swear that this has become a meme <laughs> in the Chicanx culture <laughs> That I can't not She, like, read of. you this tragic story time. Um, so, like, ahora te voy a... Oh, no, acompáñame a ver esa triste historia. And it's, there's like, so my many life. memes, but yeah. <laughs> Silvia yeah. Pinal, who, by the way, if you go back to her movies in black and white when she was really young, I remember when I was doing my research on uh, women's experiences and gender politics of the Mexican Revolution, Silvia Pinal actually has a movie of her in as a soldadera in the Mexican Revolution. And I had no idea that this was the same Silvia Pinal that I grew up with, where you would see her in the background of the television about to tell you the most tragic story of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes. El, Silvi- Chavo del, el Chavo del Ocho. El Chavo del Ocho, claro. That was a big That influence. was a big influence. That has passed down through generations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and... Uh, Antonio Aguilar told my Zacatecanos out there. <laughs> I had to represent. Dolores del Rio for all the people from Durango. I, oh, yeah. We've yeah. never spoken about where, where our families are from, right? Durango, yeah. Yeah. Um, yours is Zac- Zacatecas. I know that. But... Not only Zacatecas. Ciudad de Mexico. Ah, too. okay. Laredo, sí, too. Cierto. But okay. that, that's the beautiful thing about being Mexican. It's just like, wow, people come you from can even, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Um. But right, I, I I don't know about you, but I grew up seeing Cantinflas movies on special occasions in black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, that was big, right? I think that when I've lived in Mexico for whatever kind of uh, projects that I've engaged with or for a specific project, I noticed that Cantinflas was a sort of um, sub- subversive character that allowed criticism of social hierarchies in Mexico in a comical way. Mm-hmm. And that's why he was so popular, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't think that Cantinflas ever ever went against the status quo, but he did pull a lot of hilarity that then allowed a lot of the working class to re- to resonate with resonate or to with, yeah. Cantinflas. Um and that's why he was so big, right? And I think that that's even the case with Cantinflas here in the U.S. Yeah, even till now. I mean, if you think about it, mm-hmm. our families, ask them about Cantinflas, the stories that will come out yeah. of their mouths and how the influence yeah. came to be from them. Um, but yeah, there there are so many people in the popular culture mm-hmm. from Mexico that have influenced us. Yes. So even looking at our instagram christy Mm -hmm. for our bio right when we wrote our bio we mentioned some of our favorite quotes i mentioned frida Kahlo. i love frida i do think that she is completely commodified and and commercialized after she was globalized right and that has had a lot of uh ramifications that i'm not going to go into Mm -hmm. today maybe but I have a Frida quote. You have a Maria, Maria Felix, Felix quote. quote. Yeah. And I, I I feel like I resonate with her a lot because to me, she was such a powerful woman. And there was a lot of quotes that I could have picked yeah. from. But I picked the one about the imagination. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as women, uh, as Chicanx, to see powerful She's women She's a figure like that you that, can look at. You yeah. can look at other Chicanx guiding forces like maybe Gloria and Saldua. But we look at Maria Felix because Maria Felix... Might also resonates with our parents and our and our, our grandmothers, and I mm-hmm. think that you see her and you're like, okay, she's cool, and she is from Mexico, and she looks like me mm-hmm. in some ways, in maybe some not ways. entirely the physiognomy, but I do think that's a way 
that is somebody that you can look up to for female empowerment yeah definitely definitely um, but same with like Frida Kahlo for example same with Frida uh, we have if you have not seen the movie have you not seen the stories have you not paid attention in Spanish class where have you been <laughs> <laughs> Frida I know I feel like Frida to me mm-hmm. is a very popular uh person that is used everywhere when you think of mexican yeah. culture you think which frida is, uh, yeah which is beautiful but i also feel like many people don't know the story and you know that's so crazy when i was i was i had to use frida for some kind of research i remember and i don't remember what book it was from but it was a uh oswaldo estrada who wrote that mexico exists in the mental geography of the world thanks to frida that's mm-hmm. crazy to me that's you know crazy, but if because then I go further on to ask myself, you know, well, then what does that say about the North's understand Europe's understanding of Mexico and mm-hmm. the indigenous peoples of Mexico? She represents a lot of the indigeneity, right? Of course. And I think that that's why there's a lot of also turbulent ground or territory that maybe needs to be explored a little bit more with Frida. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she is huge for us as Chicanas and maybe Latinx and and our parents who have a transnational identity she is a big figure we're not going to go into the commodification the globalization of Frida no 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 no, no. Uh, we'll we'll have a different episode for that but uh, now going into the male side of it Pedro Infante Pedro Infante wow the amount of influence this man has put on Mexican culture themselves like mariachi culture everything there's just so many men's aesthetics aesthetics yes ways of conquistar mujeres (laughs) yeah Todo, de todo, 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 Pedro Infante. Um, and then we can go into Juan Gabriel, for example. Oh, uh, who I, I love him dearly, and I, I wish know. I could have seen him in concert. Same with Chavela Vargas. She, was in, she played at Carnegie Hall, and I wish that I could have seen her before she passed away. But Juan Gabriel, right? I, I wish I could have seen him in concert. And I think that even Juan Gabriel influences a lot of... Um, concepts of same with Frida same with Maria Felix Maria Felix and Dolores del Rio no influencing um, Chicanx Latinx beauty standards right or, or ideas of beauty yeah w- because we can resonate more with their aspect of be- of with their I guess you could say uh, beauty or like uh, elements of, of Vester or whatever it is but Juan Gabriel also did a lot of that influence right mm-hmm. um, and he he tapped in to the generation of our parents and into our generations because yeah. he's been around since yeah. that long um but i i don't want to get too into juan gabriel mm-hmm. right now because i feel like he is a topic in himself so, not so, that he's by himself but i will speak on him more when we have our music episode mm-hmm. but i mean we already hit the bases with pedro infante cantiflas chavo del ocho Amparo maria Ochoa, Feliz, Ampa, sanchez Cito, maria Felix. Cisos, all those people that have translated yeah. from our grandparents down to us and i think that it's a big responsibility that anybody and everybody should take Mm -hmm. on it's you it's you engaging understand more with memory it's you bridging the gap between your parents and grandparents lived past and our imagined futures it's a way for you to also um i think you know remember the remembering of our parents and our grandparents and that to me is so beautiful and I think that if you have the opportunity and if you haven't maybe done a lot of searching or listening or tuning into the cultural produ- the popular culture and, and all this cultural production maybe you want to learn about the history of it I'm ready to give you the history of it um, <laughs> and he's just like has her glasses I'm like on. 20th century Mexico <laughs> post-revolution Mexico's independence from Spain no right um yeah, I have my glasses ready. So I'm only I'm only just catching you. Me back here. Yeah. No, no, but I mean back to like how we always say: if you ever want to speak more on a subject, our DMs, our messages, our platforms are always open. They're for you. always open. They are always open for you. And this conversation can go on, uh, but unfortunately, we have come to the end of this episode. Yeah, <laughs> we will touch more on this later on uh we just want for season one we want to have episodes that maybe resonate with you maybe open your mind a little bit more Mm -hmm. and we hope to have more episodes where we can like yarita says dissect (laughs) 
and go into yes. pick up all my terminology all my words um <laughs> no but go uh, really yeah into, yeah you're into right into how yeah. those things have really influenced us um but we just want to thank you once again for making it this far Thank you for just listening to us, opening your mind to us Mm -hmm. and allowing us to be a space in your headphones, in your car, in your Alexa. Oh, my. She's about to start. No, you shouldn't have said that. She's like, (laughs) Christy. She's ready. (laughs) Oh, no. I'm a little here. Oh, my God. But anyways, we are closing out this episode. Once again, thank you so much for listening to us. I will end today on a sad but a bittersweet note a bittersweet note yes i actually have to fly to mexico uh because of family and later on maybe i'll talk about that Mm. but right now i won't Uh, so i will be flying out to mexico in two days so i will be over there for a bit in april so we are not going to have an episode next monday and we will come back hopefully fingers crossed two mondays from now yes Two Mondays from now, this is la lucha. <laughs> we're gonna try and make it happen uh, because right now we're not familiar with how to do podcasting from you know the phone or anything. Oh, internationally like that. or from the internationally, phone? we should really get on that. <laughs> if we're talking about Mexico here, <laughs> but I am traveling COVID friendly. Uh, I'm. Traveling. We both have our vaccines. Yes, we both have our vaccines. And that's so exciting. Thank God. Yes, we do. So, thank you guys for listening to us this week. We will be MIA next week, but you know why. And we look forward to talking to you guys next time. Before closing out, I do once again want to remind you about all our social media platforms. You can find us at Hijas de la Chicana X podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And that is spelled H-I-J-A-S-D-L-C-H-I-C-A-N-X podcast. And you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Goodbye, everybody. Remember that your voice matters and please stay woke. Thank you so much, guys. We'll talk to you next time.